Now, despite the concerted efforts being put to encourage more women and girls to actively be engaged in matters ICT, only a few girls and women in Africa are dispelling the stereotypes associated with technology and science industries in general. So what are the challenges and opportunities for women and girls in techpreneurship? Sylvia Macario, co-founder of Hepta Analytics, a tech startup in Rwanda, shares insights. The gaps that I see, so obviously currently I run a startup company, but then we have, I studied engineering first of all, but then in that process of studying that course, we didn't have an opportunity to explore any entrepreneurship opportunities and someone to, to really teach you that you know, yes, you've studied engineering, but you can also go towards this direction. We didn't have that. So it was upon ourselves to instill in us that and see that all these skill sets that we have acquired, we can actually come together and create something that can serve a, a huge population rather than just going, I don't, I'm not saying <laughs> white collar job is bad, but trying to serve a, a massive uh, population rather than just going to employment. Right. And so you mean that what uh, current scholars or those who are still pursuing the education need to do is to be a bit more proactive, proactive because no one will actually come and spoon feed you, quote right. unquote. And do you see the current generation of those who are actually undergoing scholars uh, or schooling having that fire in their stomach to actually do this? Right. Yeah. I. I'm currently seeing that it's, it's, it's happening, it's like a wave that is happening. But the thing is also these uh, universities have to have that uh, kind of nurturing. Yes, they can have all these programs to, to sort of nudge these students to, to get into these programs because sometimes you'll be so focused on heavy tech stuff and then you forget that, you know, at the end of the day you need a balance in the ecosystem. So it's, it's happening, there's, there's that wave of scholars taking up that risk to take up those opportunities, but also I'm still going back to the gap of you also need a safety net to fall back to when you're running these this companies or starting up a company because not everyone has a safety net to fall back fall to. Back yeah. to. Um, you've clearly mentioned that you run a startup today and the thing is the rates or the numbers of uh, ladies running uh, you know companies or company that are women led uh, the numbers are still not that good as far as efforts are being put to actually promote gender equality and and, and inspiring uh, other women and young ladies to actually get into business uh, that number is not that good i mean what do you have to say or share as far as where you see the problems as, and, and and the possible solutions to that so currently in, in my company, we are 50-50 ratio. We are four women, four men. So which makes it uh, a testament to everyone else out there that it's possible as a lady to be part of a company and start a, com a technology heavy engineering company f heavily focused on you know, providing quality solutions to people out there. So the main challenge that I see out there is the, with the gender, gap in joining all this, uh, especially in, in, in the tech, yes. tech world, it's the fact that there is lack of that support system where, yes, you will find there are lots of women in tech, but then at the end of it all, they fall along the path. Like, they don't eventually end up doing tech stuff. They do totally other stuff because there is that pressure of, Yes, I'm, I'm a woman in tech. There's that pressure of life that you need to, you end up, you know, you need to start a family at some point. And technology staff really are very demanding and everything. Else. So if there's that support, there's constant support, and there's that understanding that everyone can do it. Yes, a woman can do it, and a man can do it if, at, at equal levels. Then if that, there's that support, equally, then I think that will be something that will be closed up. Right. Let's, let's yeah. talk a bit about also the issue of funding. It's still also a major issue, mostly appears among the top three uh, or even five uh, challenges that affect most, uh, you know, uh, entrepreneurs. Right. Um, despite the fact that we know that this is actually a challenge, 
what are the creative ways do, that you think entrepreneurs can take or direction that they can take to actually tackle this challenge? It's, it's a major problem in the African continent, I can say, because we don't have, uh, we still don't have, we have rich African uh, business people who are still not ready to take risks in, in, in uh, you know, contributing or funding a company that they're going to reap 10 years down the road. Someone wants to invest in something that, you know, five months down the line, they're going to get their money back. We still don't have that culture of investing in technology companies and believing that this, this, these guys are going to make it. Let's just give them money. And in the long run, we are going to reap the benefits. This, the culture is not there yet. It's coming up, but we still have a long way to go. So the creative ways we are using as HEPTA, for example, right now is we take projects we work on projects with different clients as we build our products that we are eventually going to release to the market. So that's how we are surviving and balancing in this challenging ecosystem. Right. Finally, Sylvia, if a young lady is watching you right now or someone uh, who wants to pursue the direction that you've taken, what sort of message would you be telling them today that would probably spark uh, that fire in them to want to even do better? I would tell them to to believe in themselves. Because sometimes you get a lot of times society telling you that you cannot because you're female and you are disadvantaged in one way or the other because uh, the, the courses you're going into, whether it's engineering and tech, are heavily male dominated. But then trusting the process and trusting in yourself and believing that there are other females out there who have already succeeded, then I think you'll go a long way. And also just reaching out to people who can help. That's, that's how my, my team members and myself have succeeded.